What's up, peers, and welcome to the World Crypto Network. Here, continuing our videos about why Bitcoin only and why we really don't need too many shitcoins at all. And uh, of course, we're, we're going to explore here today, uh, continuing uh, this awesome resource page uh, by 6102 Bitcoin, bitcoin only.com. And today, we're going to look specifically. Uh, and wallets and uh, software wallets for that matter. Uh, so, and the the tricky thing with wallets is that they keep your private key, right? They keep your secrets, and secrets have to be occulted. They have to be hidden from others, and this means that the code base has to be secure. And as we said yesterday, uh, shit coins are a security hole. Why? Because it takes up a bunch of developer time and attention uh, away from uh, focusing on, on the code base of Bitcoin, on coding up and then testing these uh, shitcoin code bases. And this means that if you only have Bitcoin funds, but your wallet still supports 1,001 shitcoins, well, you've just increased your attack vector by a thousandfold, pretty much. And that's not really optimal, not really desired. So I am much more comfortable with putting my funds into a Bitcoin-only wallet because I know that, well, the devs actually focus their time uh, and effort and uh, well attention uh, on this project, right? Uh, so let's get right into this here because uh, the uh, Bitcoin only here has a really, really nice list um, of the several different uh, projects and wallets uh, with descriptions and the platform that they can be used. And we're going to go through, through all of these because they really are a couple good ones. Uh, also some custodial wallets. Uh, and then here below, he also listed them uh, in the... Uh, yeah, platforms that you can use these wallets. Okay, so let's jump right into it with the very first one. And that is, of course, Bitcoin Core. There, there is a major difference between running a full node, like a nodal right here, and not having any Bitcoin, right? And not checking if you have actually received Bitcoin with your full node. So if you're, if you're only verifying the blocks, but you're not using Bitcoin, then you are a full node, right? But you're not really an economic user of Bitcoin. Uh, so this is uh, then a, a uh, yeah, this is then a non-economic node. And if you're actually um, a individual using Bitcoin and holding Bitcoin and especially receiving Bitcoin, then you actually can verify if that is correct. And as soon as you have skin in the game, so to say, then your node becomes an economic node. And it's actually very powerful to, to be that part of the network. However, the question is, should we combine the verification part and, and the, the backbone infrastructure part of the, of the Bitcoin ecosystem, which is the Bitcoin core client, right? Especially the Bitcoin D uh, and or should we separate this verification backbone part from the no, from the wallet part? And so, especially in the early days of Bitcoin, everything was thrown together. In there, there was just the one Bitcoin software that included uh, all the things for consensus and all uh, the, the gossiping protocol and all, of course, the wallet itself and also the mining was all controlled in this one software. And over the last 10 years, and then especially moving forward, and the focus is very much so uh, today, is that we want to remove the wallet function from the, uh, for, from the node function, okay? And uh, that is, uh, there are some major steps already happening, and especially in Bitcoin version 0 0.18 and version 0 0.19, probably. Uh, it's going to be a, uh, uh, this removal is going to happen. So you can use Bitcoin Core directly as your node. Um, but the thing is that uh, it's it's might not be uh, the most, let's say, convenient uh, to have it running directly on your uh, Bitcoin node. Uh, However, there are other options. And I think first and foremost here is Electrum uh, because Electrum is uh, a very uh, long and very secure, uh, somewhat, or, well, I would say trusted um, Bitcoin node that uh, really has all the features that you need. It has pretty much all the features that the Bitcoin Core wallet uh, provides you. It has a superb uh, coin selection. It has a really good, just a uh, all the details on the user interface. And I would still say it's really accessible. You can connect your hardware wallet to it, uh, which is also nice. Um, and with, so the standard Electrum wallet is a SPV wallet, a simple payment verification. And this means that you are by default not running your own node, okay? Uh, so when you, when you do install Electrum, uh, you can connect to someone else's node and query the blockchain through him. 
um, well, that's not needed, right? That's not optimal. So we really want to make sure that uh, we are actually, uh, yeah, that, that we're actually verifying it by ourselves. So the cool thing is that with Electrum personal server, you can connect your Electrum wallet very easily to your Bitcoin coin uh, node. And that is very much recommended because then you really have the separation of uh, Bitcoin Core and the wallet function already, right? So, so what the Bitcoin Core devs are working on right now with version 18 and 19, uh, soon coming, then it, this is already happening here with Electrum. Uh, yes, it's another, uh, it's another, um, it's it's another code base, uh, yes, but it's a really good one. So I personally really like Electrum and uh, use it every day. Uh, so this is my go-to uh, wallet, and I can highly recommend it. Um, and of course, always make sure that that you uh, use it with a with a hardware wallet and that you have it connected to your own phone node. Uh, then. The cool thing is, though, that uh, we can have a bunch of other really nice uh, wallets. And uh, let's let's first check out here, of course, the Wasabi wallet, which we've done a bunch of videos here on the World Crypto Network. And wow, 12,500 Bitcoin made fungible uh, since August 1st, 2018. That's insane. That really is. So Wasabi wallet version 1.1.1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. Uh, not only, um, in my opinion, even better coin selection as Electrum Wallet has, uh, but it also provides you with some awesome coin join features. So you can get uh, Jomian or uh, Schnorr based coin joins. Uh, and these are really, really private. And you can get your fungibility and your privacy back in your uh, currency. That's awesome. And also, a Wasabi wallet can be connected uh, to your Bitcoin Core node uh, super easily, actually automatically uh, when you're running it on the same hardware. And that is awesome. That is really, really, really cool. Uh, so we can, yeah, we, we can just make sure that we are actually using uh, our amazing software together with our Bitcoin full node. However, not yet a hardware wallet integration. So yeah, that's, that's something. But uh, well, uh, we also have here a mobile wallet uh, that is Android only so far, and that is Samurai, another of my favorite ones, and uh, the one that I've been using uh, for a long time now. It is a wallet uh, tailor-made for Bitcoin-only privacy uh, on your phone, uh, and that is really cool. So they have uh, a really nice interface, no fiat uh, to distract you, so, so it's only the, the currency that you're actually dealing with here. Uh, they, they have a, a bunch of really cool features. Uh, Whirlpool is coming soon. Uh, that is the Wasabi Wallet coin join, or the, the zero link coin join uh, framework that is behind this, uh, the Wasabi Wallet that Adam has developed. Uh, they also have Paynims, which is reusable anonymous payment codes, uh, which is really nice if you want to uh, have a public donation address uh, that is still anonymous, really nice. And of course, you can send and receive, but there are also uh, uh, ways soon coming in two weeks uh, that you can connect it to your own Bitcoin full node. Uh, so that is really, really nice. By the way, there are some major news coming on how you will be able to connect uh, your Samurai wallet uh, on your noddle uh, to do all the Whirlpool stuff. So that is really nice. Uh, Samurai, I can uh, also recommend. Um, then we can also check out here Green Address. A Green Address is developed uh, by, by Blockstream and it is a, a software wallet that runs on all the platforms. So uh, it, they, they have a browser plugin. Uh, they have also apps for both Android and iOS. And the, the cool thing is here that Again, it's Bitcoin only, right? Uh, and it has a couple nice features. Like, for example, uh, you can do uh, a, a multi-sig, a two out of three multi-sig, for example. You can do check lock time verify. So that would be a, a kind of a time locking your Bitcoin. Uh, you can do that as well here in this wallet. Uh, and yeah, just, just a bunch of other really nice features. So uh, this is uh, together with Samurai, my mobile wallet of choice. And um, also nice that, that it runs on every platform. Uh, so yeah, uh, really cool and, and I can recommend. Then let's get, or actually, uh, no, let's, before we get into the Lightning wallets, uh, let's actually finish up here with, with some, of the, uh, some of the cool uh, on-chain uh, Bitcoin wallets. And that would be here, uh, Armory. Armory is another uh, really old, and, quote unquote, old and tested wallet. Uh, that is tailor-made for cold storage multi-signature. Uh, and it is a, a, a decent code base, and unfortunately not so well maintained in the recent days, um, but uh, still it's working, it's functional, and you can securely generate multi-sig uh, completely offline. And that is awesome. So this is a high security device or, or software that you can use to protect your, your, your currency. That is awesome. 
Okay, I, th I think we covered uh, the basics of the, oh no, um, we also have here the uh, New World Moon, which I've not yet heard of uh, before uh, and I've not yet used. So take this with a grain of salt. Um, and the cool thing is, though, that this is a, uh, a two out of two multi-sig wallet that has a couple really cool features that I have not yet seen before. Uh, so far, only available uh, on Android. Uh, so the cool thing is that you have one key, your personal key, uh, stored on your phone. You also have an encrypted second key uh, that is also stored on your phone. However, the second key uh, is also held by Moon, this, uh, the service provider here. So they can co-sign your, uh, your transactions uh, together with your unencrypted key on, on the phone, right? Your, your, well, it's still encrypted, but and not your backup phone, uh, key. So you will use your first key plus the key of Moon to always uh, send transactions. However, uh, because you have a, uh, well, yeah, and, and that gives you the second factor that, that if someone's stealing your funds, that, that then Moon can still stop him, right? However, because you still have the second key encrypted yourself, Moon cannot stop you from, uh, from taking the money away, right? So if Moon becomes uncooperative and, and starts running away, then you can encrypt the second key that you have somewhere in your backups. And then you again have two out of two, uh, which is really nice. Uh, and it's also nice that you have a, uh, where did I see this? Right here, yes. Uh, another two out of three factor. So the first key, the personal key, uh, you can also uh, have a backup of this and rebuild it when you have two out of the three following. So this is a two of three uh, factor authentication. Uh, your password, uh, that, is, that is used to encrypt everything. Uh, the email or a, a cold recovery code. So, so your backup code. Uh, and if you have two out of three of those, then you can get this one key uh, back. So the, the first out of these two, you can get back. So um, again, I have not yet tested. This is the first time that I hear from this, no, uh, from this wallet, but the features seem pretty nice. And, and actually having this, this type of two out of two multi-six scheme with uh, redundant key backups is quite nice. Though remember, right, with two out of two, if you lose one of these two keys, your complete funds are lost forever. Uh, so it's really good that this wallet has uh, these uh, two out of three backup features. Uh, and then also that you, you also hold the key that, is, that you share with Moon. Okay. Uh, so again, take this with a grain of salt because I have not yet really verified and used this wallet, but uh, it's, it seems nice. Uh, so check it out. But again, as always, do your own research. Uh, don't trust me whatsoever. I have no clue how, what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, another wallet, which I've not yet used, so, so please take this with a grain of salt, is the hodlwallet.co. Uh, and this is a, uh, a, a Bitcoin wallet that is really simple to use, right? And, and still non-custodial. So you do hold your keys. Uh, and it is uh, somewhat focused here uh, on privacy as well. Um, so... Yeah, it, it, look, it looks nice, right? It has a really intuitive user interface. Uh, matte black everything, I'm all for that. <laughs> uh, so yes, uh, as, as far as I know, no lightning integration yet. Uh, but well, it's, it's something to check out. Again, I haven't really, I haven't used it. I cannot uh, test for, for its quality or usability. Uh, but from, from what I see here, uh, it's definitely something to check out. Okay, now let's look into the uh, yeah let's let's look into the lightning wallet. So first and foremost, we have here probably like one of my favorite wallets of all time, just for the immense usability and and just such a intuitive flow of use. It's incredible. the The Jewel browser extension is a browser extension that you can have up here in your browser, uh, so that it pops out like this. Uh, well, I, I have Tor right here, so I don't have uh, Jewel installed here. And the cool thing is that uh, you can you can easily on on every page with a single click or so pay your Lightning Network invoices uh, because your your Jewel browser uh, your Jewel browser extension is connected to your own model, uh, which is really nice. So you can share here your your uh, macaroons with that and create a secure password, right? And uh, then it's really easy. Uh, you can even give uh, some sites permission uh, to automatically generate your invoice like this. So you'll have the, the pop-up always. And then, for example, say that, okay, uh, I like yalts.org. I go there and read articles every single day. Uh, and, uh, right, it's not that much. It's only 150 Satoshis. And I'm, I'm bothered with 
<laughs> with just clicking the one button here. So that, that is even too much work. So with Joule, you can also set automatic uh, spending limits. So for example, you could say that uh, I allow YALTS, uh, or every time that YALTS gives me a invoice that is below, let's say, 500 Satoshis then I give Jewel the permission to automatically and without another factor authentication uh, pay this invoice only to Jewel, uh, only to YALS and only if it is below 500 sats. Um, so that's just extremely, extremely convenient and usable. Um, so yeah, absolutely uh, really nice. Uh, then also something that, that is not yet here, uh, Lightning Zap. Uh, and that, that really is missing here. Um, it, in the, where do we have it? Letting us zap Jack Mallers. Mm -hmm. There we have it. Okay, so SAP is uh, one of the early LND nodes uh, that is super, super beautiful, both available on desktop uh, and also on iOS. And uh, I can highly recommend it, especially because it is a beautiful user interface. It's not as, let's say, intuitive or, um, or, or it's, it's, no, it is really intuitive, but it is not as detailed. So there are still some things missing uh, that, that would be nice to have in a wallet. Uh, so so some, some features like, uh, for example, seeing, uh, seeing like the details of your payment channels or the difference between on-chain and off-chain funds. It, it's not, um, not yet, or some things are not yet clear in the UX, but again, like it's really early and we're working on it and I, I have the utmost uh, respect and, and gratitude for, for the devs here. And I'm very confident that they can make this, uh, this app even more beautiful and even more awesome. But yeah, SAP really, really uh, is worth it. Uh, and then I would also uh, add Ride the Lightning, uh, which is a really, really cool, uh, Bitcoin wallets and Metallica album, <laughs> but it's also a really nice interface for your, uh, I think this is it. Yes. Um, um, nope. Uh, well, it is a really nice user interface for your, for your, uh, for your big, uh, for your lightning node. So that, that is really nice. And I use it as well. Um, actually it's, it's my favorite lightning in, uh, interface so far. Okay, then we have here the first semi-custodial wallet. So this is the, a, the blue wallet, which is a Bitcoin on-chain and a Lightning wallet. And per default, this is going to be a custodial wallet. So per default, you will not have your keys. Thus, this is not going to be your Bitcoin in this wallet, right? Uh, be really, really careful when using custodial wallets. And I, I in general, would not recommend putting many funds at all. Like you're having 0.33 Bitcoin or 3.4 Bitcoin in a custodial wallet. So it's a lot. I would be careful with that, especially on the phone. Um, but the cool thing is that you can actually uh, integrate it or connect it uh, to your own node. So you can connect it to your novel or to your Raspberry Pi. Uh, and then it's no longer custodial, right? Then it's a really nice, really pretty and minimalistic user interface uh, that you can just use for on the fly as, as sending and receiving. Uh, so this is really a, a, let's say a send only wallet. This is not something which you can use for, for like routing management or something or, or liquidity management or something. This is really just, I want to have an easy, super simple interface to send and receive Bitcoin over Lightning, nothing more. Uh, and I think Blue Wallet really does this. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a nice entrance. And then we have here the wallet of Satoshi with another really cool user interface here. It looks pretty as hell, <laughs> but it is fully custodial. So yes, it is simple. Again, like it's, it's super simple, only a couple buttons <laughs> that you can press. Uh, however, the thing is that it is custodial. It's not your keys. Uh, thus, it's not your Bitcoin, right? So always be careful and don't use custodial wallets for anything more than you are absolutely willing to lose today, right? So be careful with custodial wallets. Uh, but if you want to have an easy and intuitive user interface, uh, and if you are willing for a couple of sats uh, to, to take on the risk of giving your money to someone else, well, wallet of Satoshi might be nice. And again, it looks really, really good. Uh, then we have here also the tipping.me, which is a, a lightning network 
uh, or a lightning network custodial wallet that is especially made for easily receiving funds. Uh, so this is not made for sending. Um, this is, or well, not, not really, this is more tailor-made for receiving small denominations. Uh, you can connect it to your Twitter account and then anyone can send um, lightning to you, uh, even if you don't have your own lightning node up and running, uh, just by knowing your Twitter handle. And that is really intuitive. Uh, so I, I would know, for example, uh, that if I type in here at World Crypto Net, uh, that I will get uh, the World Crypto Network uh, here, a QR code. So I can easily send a couple Satoshis to the WCN. And then, uh, then on the other hand, right, this would mean that as soon as uh, as soon as I have a lot of funds accumulated, I need to get that out of there uh, really fast. So you can withdraw very easily, uh, and, and that is also nice. Um, and yeah, uh, also cool is that Tippany has a Twitter integration in the sense that there is now with a, a additional plugin, a little tiny lightning bolt uh, under every of your tweets. And everyone who has this, uh, the this Tippin extension installed can send you super intuitively uh, uh, Twitter tips, so to say, uh, just by clicking on the little lightning bolt under your tweets. Uh, so awesome, awesome uh, service here. And yes, it's custodial, but it's super easy to use. Um, we also have then uh, opennode.co, uh, which is also not on the website here, uh, but something that, that I, another custodial uh, solution that is Bitcoin only, um, both for on-chain and for off-chain. Uh, and it, it allows you to easily send uh, and also receive uh, funds. So um, it's, it's an entire payment process in the back end as well. So it's really nice to, to get a, a shop up and running. Uh, they have apparently a really nice uh, API integration. And it's really good for, for all those that want to focus uh, on, on other stuff. Uh, and again, right, let developers focus on building good monetary tools. And then you use these monetary tools to sell uh, and to sell your goods and services uh, to your clients, right? Uh, also, is really cool as this little chatbot is, is telling us uh, that the first ten thousand uh, dollars off payment processing is going to be free, which is really nice. Uh, and what, what I like especially about this is, is how OpenNote handles the withdrawal functions, because again, not your keys, not your Bitcoin. So as soon as you have accumulated more than a couple sats uh, satoshis here on. Uh, on open node, withdraw it. And you can either withdraw it over Lightning, uh, and then it's always going to be free. Uh, or you can withdraw it uh, on chain, and that is nice. Um, if you have to have the funds as soon as possible, you can say, okay, send me a single transaction just to my wallet. Uh, but then you will have to pay some extra, right? Uh, because, because, well, it's only a single transaction and not that efficient. And a service that OpenNode provides is a weekly withdrawal batching service. Uh, so what they do is just, uh, if you want to withdraw the funds on chain, and if you can wait, I think it's every Friday, uh, then you can simply, or, or no, I think it's Monday, it doesn't matter. Uh, then they batch all the withdrawal transactions from all their clients into one giant transaction that is though the most fee efficient and block space efficient that it can be. And that is awesome. And, and then this withdrawal is actually going to be free. So they incentivize efficient use of the block space, which I'm absolutely uh, in favor. Uh, so OpenNode, uh, I am personally using together with my TallyCoin um, fundraising application uh, for the Lightning, uh, Lightning uh, receiving. So uh, I use it. It's good. Again, be careful with not putting too much funds in there. Yes, and I think uh, that covers all the lightning notes. And now let's get into one of the one of the really really awesome things that that we Bitcoiners came up with, and that is the Glacier Protocol. And that is uh, like high security would be a, a understand a statement. It's it's like it's the highest security that you can get without investing a shit ton of money or studying like crypt uh, computer uh, science and <laughs> and all this for years okay so this is a well peer reviewed guide on how you can uh, generate complete offline uh, and with with real good like good and secure hardware 
Um, so like this, this goes so far as walk randomly into a random city, into a random uh, Best Buy or something and buy yourself without showing ID or anything, just the most cheapest uh, useless uh, laptop that you will then completely rip out all the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and nonsense stuff. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, so this might be overkill for 99%, uh, no, not 99%, but this might, might be overkill for most of you. Uh, and it says that this is specifically tailor-made for any funds larger than $100,000 uh, worth. So this is really for a lot of a lot of money that you want to keep as secure as possible. Um, and I've I've or, I've tested it uh, a couple times, and I've, I've also used it a couple times on mainnet as well, um, just just to play around with it. But it is really a yeah, it's 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 good, <laughs> but it is complex and definitely something that uh, has to be done uh, with care. So this is not something to get started with. This is something really advanced and uh, really secure though. Yeah, but Pierce, that these are a bunch of different Lightning or Bitcoin only uh, apps and wallets that you can use uh, to secure your funds. Uh, and again, the list is awesome. It really is. Uh, and I can recommend most of these wallets. Again, especially, of course, Bitcoin Core and Electrum uh, and absolutely Wasabi uh, and Samurai and Green Address. Uh, Armory, I... I, I can recommend, but I could recommend it even further if the code base would be better maintained at the current date, uh, which unfortunately is it, it is not. Um, the Oh yeah, I, I forgot to talk about this one. This is the Bitcoin Lightning wallet uh, on, uh, on Android. And this is a, a SPV Bitcoin node uh, that has a fully functioning Lightning node in it. Uh, so non-custodial and you're actually... Uh, uh, you're actually running your own full lightning node here. Uh, so this is this is no custodial lightning solution. This is actually a real send and receive lightning node. Uh, so that is awesome. Um, Moon seems cool, but I, again, haven't checked it out. Uh, HODL, uh, HODL wallet, haven't checked it out as well. Jewel is crazily intuitive. Uh, SAP is really, really beautiful. Uh, the, right, the lightning is perfect for managing your lightning node and for really getting into the nitty gritty details. Blue Wallet is easy to use and has both a custodial option and a option to connect to your own node, uh, which I, of course, recommend first. Uh, then the Wallet of Satoshi is the simplest custodial solution. Tip in me is awesome for integrating uh, with, your, uh, with your Twitter account. Open Node is great for, for your payment processing, right? And especially their, their withdrawal features are awesome uh, and just their ethos in general. And then Glacier, I can recommend if you have a couple, <laughs> many million Satoshis to store. <laughs> Piers, thank you very much here for uh, for checking out Bitcoin only. It really is is a nice and intuitive thing. But also right here, the warning: um, be careful with custodial uh, wallets. Your keys, your Bitcoin, and again, also be really, really careful with uh, with just trusting some random wallet. Uh, for example, like just because I've said that Wasabi wallet is good does not mean that you should go out blindly and using it. You should actually verify who has built it and what, what are, is their motivation? What is their background? What is their skill level? Um, how much time and, uh, and attention are they dedicating to this project? Uh, and uh, how are they financed, right? Where does the money go? Uh, because, well, I'm sorry, but, but your time and attention is a scarce good. Thus, you have absolute right to, to get paid for, uh, for that, right? And the thing is that if, if, if the wallet developers do not get paid from you, then someone else is paying them. And for what? Right? So that's always, always tricky. Uh, so be careful uh, with the wallets out there. Uh, this is your money. It's your responsibility. Um, but I do believe that Bitcoin has a plethora of different tools to choose. Uh, and uh, you can choose whichever wallet trade-off uh, is, is good for you. Right? And I use, as I said, several of these wallets. You don't have to stick to one and, and, and be loyalist uh, of this one. You can try out several of them and see how you like it. Uh, and you can also, for example, uh, like, like I don't like custodial solutions, but I still have a tip in me and open note, right? Um, but I keep my funds here at a minimum, uh, but I'm willing to take on this trade-offs with a small portion of my total hodlings, right? Uh, so again, take good care of this, uh, be responsible with this, uh, but yeah, try it out and don't trust, verify. That is, as always, uh, the key here. 
So Piers, thank you very much for joining me here on this cool uh, little walkthrough of the Bitcoin only side and especially the Bitcoin wallet section. Uh, so in the next shows, we are going to uh, talk about all the other amazing stuff that you can do only with Bitcoin. Thank you very much and see you on the next show. Bye bye.